Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use the channels report within the AIM Race Studio Analysis software to be able to look at vehicle performance. Now this is a continuation from the first video which I'll actually link to on the top right hand side of this video where we looked at setting up the channels report feature. What we're going to look at today is we're going to look at how do we use this information to be able to make decisions on how things are happening within the car, within the session, what the driver can do, and what we can learn from that particular data. And so today we're gonna to look at a max RPM uh, function. And so here you can see uh, that I have a profile set up, um, which is uh, called Formula Ford um, uh, Vehicle Health. And we've got variables in here, which I like to pay attention to, um, max RPMs, external voltage, oil pressure, which is minimum, average, and maximum. Same thing with water temperature. But as we scroll across, I've got some new variables here, which I use to be able to start understanding more of the impact of what potentially could be happening based upon those channels. And so in this instance, I've noticed that my max RPMs potentially are too high against this engine. And so what I've done is I've added uh, a math channel that triggers every time the RPM threshold goes above 7,000 RPM. And then I've also created further channels that allow me to be able to see how far I've gone in terms of distance um, within the lap above 7,000 RPM. And then the next thing is in time, which is how uh, long I've been above that threshold as well. Useful to be able to get an understanding of a few variables. The first is obviously the health of the engine. And the last thing you want to do is be able to, to blow the engine to pieces. But at the same time, there's also an indication here in terms of performance which is if you're out of the power band, how much time are you above that power band within um, you know, any given lap? And so you can see that if we look at this particular variable here, uh, in many of these laps, it's 5.8 seconds on this particular session and 753 feet where the engine is above 7,000 RPM. Now, there could be a number of reasons for that. It could be gearing, um, whereby you know, the gearing might be taking the engine above that threshold uh, down a straightaway. Um, it could be all sorts of uh, variables. It could be, um, in the most part, could be driver. The driver is just you know, trying to get too much out of the engine and over revving um, in a space where this type of car doesn't actually have a rev limiter. So we want to be able to have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the space bar uh, here and I am going to click on uh, a profile I've created called Max RPM Analysis, and I'm just going to open that up. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me um, where I am actually triggering that threshold uh, limit of 7,000 RPM on track. Uh, to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to close down one of these sessions, and so I'm going to shut down this green one here. I'm going to hit the space bar, uh, and so this is now just going to look at RPM analysis. Um, here you can see um, the RPMs, the max RPM and, and within each of the sessions that you can see here. And so um, what I can do is I can now use that math channel that I'd created to be able to create this, it's a zero and one, whereabouts on track is that happening? And then look at you know what else is going on um, within the input from the driver. And so um, what we can do here is we can see that if I click here, we can see that uh, this is consistently triggering that 7,000 RPM threshold at this particular point on track here. And you know, if I were to zoom in, I can see where that is and it's relatively consistent in terms of a gear shift. Same thing um, is happening here. Uh, and then the same thing is happening here elsewhere on track. If I zoom out, I can see where that is coming out of each of these corners. And so it's really a corner exit um, where this is being triggered and so not a gearing issue necessarily. And so if I click in here, I can see that there could be some decisions that the driver needs to make. And so I'm looking that if I look at my calculated gear threshold, you can see here that it's a second to third shift uh, that that's happening and then third to fourth shift as well, potentially. And so uh, areas to be able to say, OK, this is a situation where the driver is just you know, revving the engine too much before changing to the next gear. And then obviously not only putting pressure on the engine, but also losing uh, potential performance. And so what we want to be able to do here is make some decisions. Uh, and those decisions need to be, do I, uh, as a driver now, potentially uh, carry, in this instance, third gear all the way through this corner? Do I short shift to be able to avoid, um, you know, running out of revs while I'm still turning and may have, uh, you know, some significant busyness in the car in terms of turning and changing gear at the same time? Um, and so a lot to be able to, to make some decisions here. 
just to be able to show you um, what uh, what we've done in terms of the math channel here, because I think a lot of people may be interested in that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the space bar again, and I'm going to go down uh, and show that this is this is where the uh, channel exists. It could be anywhere on your chart. I've just got it down here. This is the max RPM, and if I go up into the math channels here, I can show you that my um, setting here, max RPM on, is basically is um, if and then GT stands for greater than RPM, which is the name of the channel, is above 7,000 RPM. Show me a one, and if it's not, show me a zero. So it's an on-off. But what this also allows me to do is create additional mathematics channels in here as well that says, if now that maximum RPM channel, see this name here matches this name here, um, is, uh, is on, tell me how far, by, by using the, the speed channel, how far I've gone, and this is miles per hour to feet uh, as an example. So that shows me how far I've been on. Same thing applies in terms of time um, with the lap integral fun function as well. So I will post these in the description below so you can use these, um, but don't forget that you've got to make sure that your initial RPM on is, you know, whatever the name of your channel is. So there you go. So that's the math channel itself. And so, you know, time is just how long this switch is on for, and it just allows us to be able to make some decisions. now. What I would do, and actually would do in this situation um, now, is I'd go into my Race Studio 3 analysis. This is my GS dash, which is connected to the Evo 4S, is that I would change my shift lights here. I would make sure that uh, there's a visual prompt that tells the driver to be able to change that. And so uh, you can change them independently here, or I can just click here, say I want to bring this threshold down to 6,800 RPM. And I want to probably bring this one down here, Bring this down and these are these are user defined i mean you can uh work uh with additional data you may have as to where exactly the power band is for your vehicle or you could just do averages here that i'm doing and so you can just bring these down uh, to whatever your particular preference is and you can make sure that you know that's your new band that you've got and so now that's going to represent the other thing you can also do as a visual prompter as well for the driver because obviously the driver's busy you've got a million things that are going on at the same time is to be able to create an over rev light. And so here I've got an over rev light that comes in this magenta color. It comes on over, um, in this instance, it's seven and a half thousand RPM for an actual true over rev, but we could adjust this. That doesn't go away and a little message comes up says over rev until the data is downloaded. That means it's gonna be on the screen until you download the data. And this won't go away until the data is downloaded as well, which means there's always gonna be a visual prompt to be able to say, avoid those revs and make sure you're paying attention to this because obviously um, chasing down someone on track, chasing lap times may also create the distraction to not necessarily pay as much attention here. And so this is a great way of being able to use the channels report feature and then tie it together with decisions you're going to make as to configuration changes that you may want to be able to do. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want more information, please comment in the comments box below, or if there's anything that you don't like, please also comment. Um, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, um, because there will be more videos on the way with this kind of information.